Hi, this is Mariah Gullo from The Hollywood Reporter, and this is Meet Your Emmy nominee, and I have Jane Lynch with me today. Hi. So, Jane, you're nominated for Dropping the Soap. Yes. You are the star and the executive producer. Oh, indeed. I don't, I'm, I'm, well, it's an ensemble. It, is, a, it yeah. is an ensemble. Yes, indeed. But I, I um, am an executive producer, too. Yes, and I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Sure. Because it's kind of a meta experience. It is, of isn't your it? character. Mm -hmm. Exactly, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very but, smart. But first, I wanted to talk about uh, your nominations. Sure. Uh, you've been nominated nine times for an Emmy. You've won three times, mm -hmm. two for uh, Hollywood Game Night and right. one for Glee. Yeah. So is this a surprise to you to be nominated? Yeah, you know, when we were doing this, the last thing I was thinking about was, oh, I might be nominated for an Emmy. Um, you know, of course, anything you do, you, you don't put that, that's putting the cart way before the horse. Right. But um, yeah, so it was a, a real, it was a surprise. I mean, obviously I knew I was being um, submitted for mm -hmm. it, but uh, it was a, a surprise and um, a delightful one. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully it's gonna get more eyeballs on our um, web series. Mm -hmm. Um, which is also available on Amazon, Google Play, and iTunes. Right, exactly, yeah. So if you have Amazon Prime, you can get it for free. Nice. And nice. Um, it is, the nomination is Outstanding Actress in a Short Form. Yeah, isn't that nice? Yeah. Very nice. I like yeah. it. Have you watched any of the other short forms? No, I haven't, but I know Mindy. Mindy Sperling has, mm -hmm. is nominated twice, and unfortunately, yeah. I think it's going to split. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. No, she's, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of hers, and to be in her company um, yeah. is a great thing. Yeah. And who did you hear from following your nomination? Oh, let's see. Who told me? Oh, isn't that funny? I don't remember. I forgot that they were being. Uh, uh, announced that morning. I think my agent called me mm -hmm. or sent me an email. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you've hosted big shows like the Emmys before. Yes. Uh, what's the biggest challenge that somebody like Jimmy Kimmel has in front of him? I don't think Jimmy Kimmel has any challenges. <laughs> I think he uh, pretty much has down what he does, and he just enjoys it. Mm -hmm. I think for somebody who's never done it before, it's a different. Like I, it was my first time. Um, you don't know exactly what the job is until you're actually out there doing it. Um, but if anybody's new at it, I know Jimmy's this year, right? So mm -hmm. he's an old hat. Um, but if you're ever uh, new at it, just know it's not as hard as it looks. It's really just about keeping everything moving and, and uh, having some good joke writers. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's refreshingly honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you could sit next to Emmy, anybody at the Emmys besides your plus one, who yeah. would it be? Well, I'm going to be sitting with uh, Paul uh, <laughs> uh, Witten, who is uh, uh, my fellow executive producer and star of the show. But I'd love to sit next to Julia Louis-Dreyfus and just kind of... Uh, Oh, trade yeah. barbed comments about everything <laughs> happening with each other. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And what's the best night of Emmy Night? What's the best part about Emmy Night for you? Um, oh gosh. It's being in a room and looking around and seeing all of these people who you really want to meet who, or who you've seen on television for a long time whose work you admire. Um, it's There's a lot of joy. It's um, you know one of those things that you're, you're it's, a, it's a rare opportunity to be uh, invited and um, uh, you know, you see the best of the best, and my uh, category will probably be in the creative Emmys, and that's all the technical people, and um, I always run into my pals from uh, uh, Glee, who are now on American Horror Story, and, mm. and uh, the OJ show, and you know, they're just the best of yeah. the best, and um, it's great to run into them and see all those wonderful art artisans and technicians. Mm -hmm. And is there anything challenging about Emmy night? Just as far as well, the you know what? Of if it. I feel fat, it's no fun. <laughs> right. If I feel trim, yeah, and um, that really, that's all it is. Really, that's it. Yeah. yeah, my my time can be ruined if I don't I feel good about if I feel bloated. Mm -hmm. That's that's all there is. <laughs> yeah. If I feel nice and trim, and then I can really enjoy it and be in the moment. Mm -hmm. But if I'm like. My spanks are so tight. That was really <laughs> yes, absolutely. That was refreshingly honest too, wasn't it? <laughs> very, <Yes>. very much <laughs> so. Uh, what's the best Emmy party to go to? I don't go to them. Oh, you I, don't. I'm not a party person, but let mm -hmm. me think. One year, uh, uh, John Hamm and Amy Poehler had a party at the Soho House called the Losers Ball, and um, <laughs> luckily they lost that year, so we could keep that name. But that was a blast. Yeah. You could not go in if you won. You weren't allowed. <laughs> so only losers. That's so I was welcomed in. That was a lot of fun. We danced on the dance floor. I brought my sister. I had two nieces with me, and here we are dancing with John Hamm, and he's such a goof, and it was really nice. It was a lot of fun. Oh, that's cool. Um, so let's talk a little bit about dropping the soap. Yes. Um, so this could be the most cost-efficient Emmy nominee because you told Out Magazine that you each made $100 <laughs> a day to work yeah. on this. And I think we probably kicked it back, too. 
I think I might have kicked it back anyway. Yes, yeah, obviously you're not doing it for the money. Right. And it was one of those really cool projects where we got everybody, we got really great people, not only actors, like we had John Michael Higgins and Missy Pyle and a bunch of other people that you'll recognize them, mm -hmm. but we, uh, all of our uh, crew people, they, they all did it for like a nickel. Yeah. And we did it fast and funny and furiously and... Uh, um, quick setups, we shot things really fast, and I think for comedy anyway, that's the best way to go. And uh, so it was, you know, a, a real joy. Uh, obviously, um, money had nothing to do with it. <laughs> it's more <laughs> it out of a, friendship. Yeah, right? friendship. It was like a bunch of friends getting together to do a really funny, well-written soap opera about, uh, you know, uh, you know, about how soap operas are basically circling the drain these days. And this is mm -hmm. a particular one trying to stay relevant. <laughs> trying anything. Anything. Vampires. Anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ear eating diseases. Whatever it takes. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yes, you were saying that you shot this fast and furiously. Yes. Um, can you describe the longest day on set? Um, I think they were all pretty long. I think we went 12, 13 hours every day. Um, so they kind of all blend in together. But by the end of it, you know, as the executive producer at that point, I, they let me just be an actor. Mm -hmm. For the most part, I, you know, the executive producer thing, I didn't have to do anything really except show up. That There were, you know, like Paul worked really hard, Kate and Mandy worked really hard so that we could just show up and act. So for me, it was just fun. But I know those guys were pooped. <laughs> and then, of course, there's post, you know, months of post. And uh, it was a lot of work. But like I said, it's it's a labor of love. And it's it's and it's so good. I, I hope everybody mm -hmm. will watch it. I particularly love the camera work. It's just like, Thank like you. you said, fast and furious. It is. And you'll notice that when we're shooting the soap opera itself, it's shot like a soap opera mm -hmm. with the exact same lighting. And uh, then when we go to the uh, behind the scenes antics, it's with the shaky camera. And, uh, yeah. not, not where you'll get sick to your stomach watching it, but right. it just feels very <laughs> real and very spontaneous and Yes, yeah, so it reminded me a lot of Arrested Development. Yeah, oh yeah. good. Well, that's a lovely thing to be compared to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I want to talk about your meta character because yes. you're an executive producer playing an executive Playing producer. an executive producer. Can you tell us about uh, Olivia Vanderstein? Vanderstein. Well, she's named after my dog, which has passed Aww. away. Oh. Olivia. Um, uh, Olivia is a cutthroat me, she laughed all the way through Sophie's Choice, is how she's uh, described. She uh, <laughs> has a real mean streak. She's really dark. See if this sounds like somebody in the White House right now. She revels um, in chaos. She loves mm. turning people against each other and kind of sits back and, and lets people think, like, you're my favorite. No, you're my favorite. Mm -hmm. and, um, she loves when things uh, fall apart so that she can swoop in and take control. And she wants to keep this uh, soap opera relevant. And if she doesn't, no skin off her nose. She'll move on to something else. But she's going to do her best to really shake this up with product placements, ridiculous storylines. We add aliens to the storylines <laughs> yeah. where everybody has to abandon the city via a luxury cruise yes, liner. A yacht. <laughs> <laughs> a yacht. And they get stuck on an island. And, you know, the plots get crazier and crazier. And the actors who have been on this show, especially Paul Witten's character and um, the, the two, there's a love triangle, mm -hmm. and they've been on the show forever and they have they will have no life after they will have no means of income they're like in their late 40s and maybe even in their early 50s mm -hmm. and if this show goes away they have nothing so they're desperate just desperate mm -hmm. and they'll do anything Olivia says and she loves that <laughs> so a lot of a lot of good comedy derives from desperation yes. doesn't it yes because we all know we'll do anything when we have our eye on some prize and, or something we have to hold on to we'll do anything and subject ourselves to such humiliation to hold on to it. <laughs> um, so, so I was going to ask you if Olivia's character is based on any executive producers you know, know or have heard stories about. I've heard stories about executive producers like that. Um, they kind of come in to uh, kind of blow things up, mm -hmm. um, like the uh, showrunners. Um, and, uh, of course, I'm not going to say any names. Oh, but sure. First of, of all, I'm in menopause, and I can't remember anything. <laughs> So I wouldn't, I wouldn't anyway. <laughs> um, but yes, the, and it's not just in Hollywood, of course, but mm -hmm. it, it is it is rampant in Hollywood. But I must say, from what, you know, like the shows that are great that are on TV now, mm -hmm. you I've met a lot of these showrunners because we're at the award shows together. They're fantastic people. And yeah. they're, you know, they're just so nice. Like uh, Vince Gilligan is one of the nicest people mm. in the world. And he makes one of the, he's made two of, of the best television shows ever. And they're so dark. And yeah. he's just this light guy. I mean, they, someone may prove me wrong, but um, <laughs> from what I can tell, I mean, I, I love the showrunners I got to meet. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so maybe you're pulling your inspiration from other things, like you mentioned, uh, somebody in the White House, yeah. perhaps. Yeah, I, I, there's a lot of that going on. Uh -huh. You know, kind of this. Uh, what? How much humiliation will you take uh, before you leave? And mm. uh, so. I, that's a question I guess all of them are asking themselves. <laughs> yeah, it seems like <laughs> just today yeah, people are exactly, yes. asking themselves that question. Yeah, yeah I bet, but there are a couple of people asking themselves that right now. <laughs> um, so your career spans 30 years. Oh, come on. I'm Does sorry. It? I'm sorry to tell you, but it's true. Okay, no, that You've makes had sense. an amazing career. It's about 27. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, what are you most proud of? Well, I don't know that I have pride so much. I think if there's anything, um, it's... Uh, you know, I show up to play. Mm. I don't show up to work. Mm. Um, and I've done that the whole time, even before, you know, I started getting a lot of work, which was not until I was around 40. Mm. You know, I was doing a lot of theater and I was doing um, commercials and voiceovers, and I was very happy doing that. I mean, you always have your eye on some prize, but um, uh, I was always very happy because I was doing what I love. So I don't know that I have any pride around any of it. I feel almost like it was not of my doing anyway. Mm -hmm. It was like I was. Uh, you know, hit with the lucky stick, and hmm. and I was smart enough to go. Oh, I'm supposed to be here now. Okay, I'll go there. And oh, I'm supposed to be here. Okay, I'll go there. Hmm. Did you get any good advice during your careers that you'd like to pass on? No, I didn't. I didn't <laughs> get any good advice. I never asked for it. Nobody ever offered it. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, when people ask me, um, I always say I have nothing to offer you except that your path is going to be your own. But mm. um, a lot of times, um, you know, you think you need to be go a certain way. Like for the longest time, I thought I was going to be a theater actor, and I ended up getting into Second City, uh, the touring company, and that was not at all in you know in my conscious mind anyway. And then that 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 ended up blowing up my entire concept of who I thought I was in terms of um, an artist. I, I ended up loving sketch. I love putting on a different wig for every character. I loved singing the silly songs. I loved the audience. I didn't love the improvising so much. I grew to love that. Mm. Uh, but uh, I, I guess the thing is, is whatever rolls in at your feet, check it out before you say no, except for like porn. That's a, that's a no-brainer. Don't yeah. do the porn. You don't need to. <laughs> but whatever rolls in at your feet, take a look at it because it's mm -hmm. probably there for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you make uh, very precise choices about what projects you I am up. now and yeah. they much more I, I'm not afraid to say no let's put it that way um, uh, I used to say yes to everything and and because uh, I had kind of a desperation to work mm -hmm. all the time whether it was for free or for money um, and now um, I'm I, I don't need that so much that fire is gone mm -hmm. that fire to you know what's what's next yeah you know. Is there anybody who you still want to work with that you haven't been able to yet? No, because I always get, I mean, I never thought I'd work with Meryl Streep. I mean, <laughs> played her sister in a movie. Yeah. So I stopped, a long time ago, I stopped with the goals, and gosh, I hope I get to. Uh, I must say, though, uh, when I was in Chicago, um, uh, Laurie Metcalf, mm -hmm. the actress, was at Steppenwolf, and I used to go watch her, um, and I thought she was just great. And mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, she you know blew up as uh, Roseanne's sister on Roseanne, and and then I just saw her on Broadway mm -hmm. in Doll's House 2, and it was just, she's so good. Yeah. And it was really, you know, it, it, there are very few people that I sit back and go, oh my God, that's wonderful. Well, that's not true. But uh, she she was, she's yeah. One of she, those people. Yeah, and Chris Cooper, who acted with her too, and I oh, forget yeah. the name of the other woman who was with them. But uh, yeah, they were, it was fantastic. Oh, it was wonderful. really great to yeah, sit back and watch beautiful theater. <laughs> so I have something that we have been uh, doing with the Emmy nominees called First Best, Last Worst. Okay. So it's just four questions. Okay. Uh, the first acting job that made you think, I've made it. I've made it. Um, I did a McDonald's commercial in Chicago. Mm. Yeah, and I was playing a mother, too. I was, like, 21 years old, and I was playing the mother of a 16-year-old. Yeah, and I was, oh, my God, I'm doing a McDonald's commercial. I made it. <laughs> That's great. Uh, best story you have from the set of Dropping the Soap? Uh, best story I have from the set of Dropping the Soap? Uh, oh, my God, isn't that crazy? I can't think of one. The scene I do with Paul mm -hmm. in my office where he does not know if I'm being truthful <laughs> or if I'm playing him and if you just watch his reaction he's one of the best reactors I've, I've ever worked with and um, we have this scene where the whole time both of us are like but what comes out of our <laughs> mouth is just kind of normal every day you know so I'm um, happy to work with That's you that kind great. of a thing and, and we're both 
completely in different places. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a lot of breaking on set for? No, nope, not a lot of breaking. It no. was really that's why you know I, I, it was so good. I mean, I, that, if I do say so myself, we were so dead on and in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a joy. Mm, great. Um, last time you were recognized in public? Oh, probably on my way here. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're very right. I had Kings Road getting my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Worst audition experience? Um, I was sitting on the back of a couch and I fell, and they didn't even notice. Oh. The person at the camera, not unlike you, kind of sitting there <laughs> bored. No, they didn't even notice. <laughs> oh, and also I did a, um, you know what, I don't think that happened to me. I think that happened to somebody else. I'm oh. claiming a story. I do that all the time. Oh, my God, I claimed it as my own. <laughs> let, me, let me come up with another one. I, in fact, I think my friend Rick Hall told me that. Rick, I apologize. I just claimed it as my own. That did not happen to me. It happened to Rick. <laughs> Um, what happened to me is I was uh, did the real life Brady Bunch on stage, mm -hmm. and then the Brady Bunch movies kind of grew out of that because Sherwood Schwartz came to see us and he started, decided to do the movies, so mm -hmm. we kind of take credit for that. But I went to audition for the movie that was kind of taking off of what we did on stage for two years, and the casting director after I did one take, I was just going to play like a, a, a mother at an airport. She said she stopped the camera and said, "Do you know what we're trying to do here?" She was like trying to tell me how to act this thing that oh, we no. originated. <laughs> that was terrible. You know what we're trying to do here? Yeah. Do. <laughs> do you have any advice for actors when they go out on their auditions? I always, well, I do actually. I always look at it as a performance. I never go in half ass. Um, I not only off book, I'm completely off book. Mm -hmm. I've incorporated it into me, so they're going to see the absolute best. Yeah. of what I can do. It's not, I'm not going to hopefully have to look at the page. Mm -hmm. And you can't be in between. You can't be half memorized because then you're right. not doing it. I'd rather read it cold mm -hmm. or be completely at performance level. And you, no matter how the script is cut up for your um, audition, give it a beginning, middle, and an end and make the writing sing so that the writer's like, hey, I'm great. <laughs> That's some really good advice. <laughs> um, so you were also one of the stars of the L Word. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on the revival? Oh, I think it's fantastic. I, yeah. mean, I hope they'll ask me back. I think it's just great. I think it ended too soon anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't think it was time for it to end. But but it's good, though, that it goes away and then we meet them 10 years later, right? It's like mm -hmm. 10 years now. I'm thrilled. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Um, so just a few more questions before yeah. we wrap up. Um, so the reviews have been really good for your new project. Yes. Uh, Project Manhunt, yes. Manhunt Unabomber. Unabomber, yes. You play Janet Reno. I do. Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, it premieres today. Yeah, August 1st. Um, and where will you be watching this? On uh, the Discovery Channel mm -hmm. and also on the Discovery app, too, mm -hmm. the Discovery uh, Go app. And how did you uh, create this char real yeah. life character, Janet Reno? Yeah, well, that's always a challenge because people know her, but you know, you kind of have to take that fear and th push, it, push it aside. Um, I, I knew who Janet Reno was, and I was actually um, a fan. I don't know if that's the word for yeah. an attorney general, but um, I was... Uh, she was pretty cool. Yeah, she was really cool. <laughs> she, well, she was the first woman. She was about the fourth person Clinton put up for that job because each uh, nominee kept being flawed in some way. Remember mm. Nanny Gate? I know you're way too young for this. but <laughs> So we found this six-foot-two woman basically in the Everglades, you know, wrestling um, alligators, and wow. uh, brought her, and she was, you know, a prosecutor, and... Um, uh, and brought her to Washington and you know you can say a lot about the mistakes she's made like mm -hmm. Waco was you know mm -hmm. lo loss of life mm -hmm. and everything but she is one of those people that um, you know she had to make the tough decisions and she would you know feel the remorse and um, apologize and um, continue to do her job in spite of that and with the Unabomber case it worked out they took a really big risk um, allowing that manifesto, uh, Ted Kaczynski's manifesto, to be published in two major newspapers, the, the Post and the Times. I think it was the Post and the Times. And um, uh, that's basically um, negotiating with terrorists. So something you're not supposed to do. But it ended up mission accomplished and that uh, Kaczynski's brother recognized some of the thoughts and the writing style and, and he was found and you know still behind bars. Um, so it took 20 years to crack that case, and uh, uh, the Unabomber, our show, focuses on Jim Fitzgerald, who was the FBI agent who came up with this unique and revolutionary way to profile criminals, and it's what led to the, um, uh, uh, the arrest of Kaczynski. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel like how do you feel that the show like fits into her legacy? Like, 
Well, I think it's great that, well, you know, she, first of all, I'm, I'm not very present in this. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of a, a sprink, sprinkled through uh -huh. it throughout it. So it's not really focused on her, but, um, uh, you know, I think there, are, there are, she left a lot of fans. You yeah. know, she just passed away right before we started shooting. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people uh, on both sides of the aisle have terrific respect for her. Um, and, you know, uh, and she was completely independent. She went where the facts led her. She was a really good leader in that she had a kind of a patient, kind, yet very firm way about her. Um, but she had great respect for the Department of Justice and for justice itself. And, 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 and you know, she was really something. So I hope uh, I captured some of that. A good role model for today. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'd love to have another Janet Reno in, <laughs> at the Department of Justice. It would be really wonderful. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Well, Jane, um, do you have any predictions for what's going to happen on Emmy night? I don't because I'm just not up on it. I'm not up. I'm <laughs> sorry. I do not watch enough television anymore. There's, it's almost like there's too much and it's yeah, too good. It's, it's all true. too good. There's a lot of stuff out there and I, and I don't watch it. I watch House of Cards, but I usually binge watch it and I've only watched like the first three because what's happening in our politics is kind of better. It's, <laughs> if it weren't it's so true. damn scary, <laughs> yeah, you know? It is true. It's crazy. It's like I go to watch a House of Cards and I'm like, yeah, let me check deep Twitter first. See what's going on <laughs> deep in deep Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> I love it. Jane Lynch, thank you so much thank for you. being here. This was great. The show is dropping the soap and we will see you on Emmy's night. Oh, I can't wait. Thank you.